Hey there, <laughs> I'm Nutrix. Today we're gonna to talk about the System 8. Yeah, 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 yeah. I bought one. It's mine, I'm happy with it. I sold my JP8000. Yeah, I know, people are asking you why. Because <laughs> I had the JP8000 for like 15 years. I wanted something new. So I ended up with the System 8 and I'm really happy about this. And one of the feature that uh, people really like about the System 8 is the fact that it uses plug -out. So you can run different model of different synthesizers inside it. But today we're not talking about this. I wanna show you the, I would say, native synthesis of the System 8. And it is really powerful. It is, I'm not gonna say a beast because people don't like to hear it's a beast, but it's a, I think it, it does everything you expect out of a synth except maybe a couple of things that, and I'll tell you why, or I'll tell you later on within the video, little things that I would kind of add to it. But uh, for the most part, this is just a massively powerful subtractive synth using all the techniques that we know for good old, you know, subtractive synthesis that sounds good and little details that you will not find everywhere. And so let's dive in right away. So this is a complete tour of the System 8 native synthesis. Let's go. The System 8 is so detailed in what you can do with it that uh, I find myself with a very long video to explain how it works. So basically I'm gonna cut it up in many parts. So this video is gonna be only about the oscillator section mostly in how you can control from the rest of it, but basically the oscillator section. The next video will be about the LFO and the filter. You have on screen, you have the keyboard itself, okay? You get this nice little keyboard. The top section is the whole synth. Um, you know, you've got step sequencer, memory here, more controls if you want here, and basically volume and arpeggiator on that side here, basically. So the synthesis is this section here which if you do the general approach, it's fairly logical the way it works. It's what we expect. We've got the other phone on the side. I'll say the one, I'll say the two. They're mostly the same outside of this little modulation here, cross modulation, ring and sync. But the rest of it is basically the same twice. You get a third oscillator, which is also the sub. You get a mixer of everything here that also has a noise. You get a pitch envelope. You get a filter with its own envelope. You get an amplifier with its envelope. And three different effects. I'll do another video just on the effects because honestly, they sound really nice. I often don't care about the effects part of a synthesizer because I'm saying, well, sometimes they're good, sometimes they don't. So um, I often think about using external effects for that. But honestly, the one built in in this one are killers. They really sound they really sound great. So I'll do another video just to listen to the different effects, and you'll hear how clear and and you know efficient and useful they are. Maybe I'll if I have time, I'll drop by and uh, show you some of the things, the things I like about this one. Uh, so this is the synthesis. Now the one thing that people might complain about is the fact that there's only one LFO, this LFO one, and that's it. And honestly. It bothers me also. I would like to have a second LFO, but um, there's a lot of controls here that you can use. There's the step sequencer where you can actually do motion control with it. So it kind of becomes a, an, a second LFO by just the motion sequence that you can do with the sequence here. You can actually record the movement. So then, yeah, it becomes a second LFO if you need to. So in the end, there's, there's ways around it. So let's start right away. Uh, we have oscillator one, just listen to the one. I do have a very, you know, simple sound, just oscillator one, because I want to hear the raw sound of the wave form itself. And you've got on screen the information. So you have the sound, you have an oscillator one, shapes, of course, and the pitch. It's uh, very wide from 64 to two, so basically wider than we used to see on any synthesizer. We have coarse tune and fine tuning, which is in semitone and synth. We have a cross modulation. This is, we'll talk about that later, but let's talk about the color because when we change, you see that this is linked to this and modulation 
is linked to color and color is linked to changing part of the sound of the waveform that we select here. So we have right now sawtooth. If you click color, you turn it, you're basically going to change the shape. It adds kind of another sawtooth within the saw, so it becomes almost a pitch higher. So by playing with this, it becomes really interesting, and that's where the mod under it, let's say LFO, you're sending the LFO now to change the color. That's a cool thing that now. And again, this is only oscillator one, nothing else. So really powerful right out of the oscillator section, really rich and deep and, and moving and, and alive. That's the cool part to get this right away. So let's put back to main manual and change this. Okay, so you hear this. This one is a sawtooth. Second one is a square wave. Not exactly square. But you get the result that you were looking for. The only thing that is the pulse doesn't go to zero. It doesn't go, it doesn't become direct current. So because if it does, it becomes silence. It doesn't do it on this one. And I honestly like it when you can do that. But on this one you cannot. Okay. You have then a triangular waveform that changes to something else again. Okay, you're basically moving the shape, changing it. Now the next one is the one that people really love is the super saw. Now, uh, Roland invented that for the Jupiter, the JP8000, and that's one reason that I still get my super saw here. Of course, people say it doesn't sound the same. I think that no two synths sound the same, so it's going to be another super saw, but it's a pretty cool damn, pretty cool, cool one. So, you have one control, and this one control the controller when you bring it up. At the same time, you're changing the volume of the other sawtooth is like having, I don't know, seven sawtooth at the same time playing and you're changing the detuning and the volume of the other ones. Keep in mind, this is on oscillator one. You can have another one on oscillator two, so you can have a massively powerful. So that's why I'm saying it doesn't mimic the original, which was already an imitation of. <laughs> another original but this one sounds really fat and nice this is just the raw sound of oscillator one next one is kind of a square wave with some movement in it it's kind of a weird mod square wave but you hear the sound of a square wave you hear the kind of nasal sound of it okay Next one is kind of a weird triangular shaped, like triangular mod shaped. Now, if you want to know more information about this, you actually have in the manual, variation one, sawtooth, square, triangular, sawtooth again, um, square wave two and triangular two. So these are the different one you have here. Now if you click on variation two, if you turn that to two, now you have the second column here, the noise saw, the logic operator, FM, FM plus sync, vowel, and CB, which is cowbell. Let's try these, you'll see. So 
this is the noise saw. So you hear the noise when you bring the mod up. See, it's a little noisy in it. Clean. Noisy. Not a big difference, but if you put your headphones, you're going to hear that. Clearer in the higher pitch. See? So, yeah, higher you are, obvious, more obvious it is. Now, second one is the Logic Operator. But this is a pretty cool one. It has that movement in it. It moves, it's really live. It has this movement in it, which is really fun. I like, I like, I really like that movement. It is really cool. I like that. Okay. So it opens up a totally different type of sounds that you expect. And this is again, we're only in oscillator one. We're, having, we're not even using anything else than this with his own modulation inside the oscillator. So really powerful right out of the box, really cool. The other one is, let's bring that up. It's, um, in this case, it's FM synth. So we have the sine wave, which is the carrier. If you want to know more about FM synth, there's a link here to a video where I talk about FM synthesis, carrier, modulator, modulator sends to the carrier, modulates it, brings it more frequency in it. Go watch this. But this is in this one, it means that you've got two operators here. And then when you bring it up, you've got FM happening. Pretty cool. Again. And one cool thing about this is in the modulation that you can send to the color, let's say we take P envelope, which is the pitch envelope, which is a very simple attack and DK. Let's put some DK in it. So I'm using this as a source of modulation to control this thing here. Faster. One longer. Or you want the other way. You want this to go. And this is just the envelope controlling the modulation of the color of the second variation of this one, which means we're doing FM synthesis. <laughs> really cool, really, really powerful right there. Um, the next one is FM, but with sync. Really cool again. So it means that the modulator is synced to the carrier, so you get that vibration, which is different. The color is not the same than the first one, which was just... That's it. Okay, next one is a, the vowel. Now this could be really cool with the LFO on it. Get that vowel kind of sound. 
really cool. Next one is uh, triangular wave. No, this is the cowbell. So you go, okay, what's this? Honestly, I wouldn't use it as a cowbell. It's a pretty cool kind of radio sounding mid nasal. So that's a cool sound if you want to create a lead that cuts through your mix because it doesn't have any bottom. So it will not fight with bass and it's not very bright. It's just kind of in the middle. And of course, if you're bringing some distortion, So with the help of distortion, this becomes another type of sound again. So pretty cool. Um, so that was for vari variation two. Now let's go to variation three. Now to explain what this is, it's basically FM synthesis. Variation three means you have two operators, so carrier and modulator, and they're both sine waves. And it's basically the ratio. It's one for one, one for one and a half. So this one is a uh, one and a half the speed of the, the the first one. This one is twice as fast, so this is a, uh, a pitch higher than this one, um, you know, double the speed. 3.5, so pro more for bell sound. 15 times the first one, so uh, more like electric piano. 6 to 1, this is a bizarre one, but it's, they say it sounds like electric guitar feedback. Mm, not sure, but it does create other type of sounds. And this one also is interesting, is when you turn the color knob, you're controlling the th these three at the same time here. So you've got uh, three, so the three is modulating, modulating the two and two modulating the one. So uh, it's a sine wave modulating a triangular wave, modulating a sine wave. And in parallel, we've got the same thing happening from five to four. And there's different ratio of them. So again, there are just f like six different types of FM synthesis, if you want. And they're all create these different, you know, all, um, harmonics. So let's try them you'll hear, but there, everything here is now, uh, to that point, it's FM synthesis. So three, first one. So it's a subtle one, which is cool. More harmonics. Next one. Again, we're in the third one, variation three. We're actually using, there's using two operators to create this sound. And again, if we go using the pitch envelope, it becomes interesting. So more like a electric piano, if you want. Let's bring that down just to hear that. Sound of this one. Next one. This one has more harmonics, is like. This one's really high pitched. And the last one goes from one note, a sine wave. So interesting, that's the last one. And then if we go variation four, all of them, again, they're FM synthesis, but more complex. So more metallic sounding or noisy sounding. And again, I like the envelope for this. Try the other one. Pretty cool, pretty cool for that type of sound. That's this one. This is more, more noisier. There's harmonics. 
there's, a, there's more harmonics in this one. And the last one. It's totally different. Kind of a high pitch overtone. So, so this this is the original internal waveform you can choose and the way you can change the evolution of the color of each of them and modulating them. Now you've got manual, LFO, pitch envelope, frequency envelope, amplitude envelope, or oscillator 3. So all of these can be a source to modulate the value of this one. Now a cool thing about this, it's that of course you've got like I did the pitch, which is a cool thing. Let's say we go back to, I don't know. This one, okay. That's the logic. Now, if we take the oscillator three, let's say we take another one. So now, what I have is oscillator three, which is a sub oscillator, which runs in sync with this oscillator. but it's not low enough to be a LFO. So create these weird modulated... See, like this one, this is a cool one. So this is, the vibration is slower, go high in pitch. You've got, let's jump right to the oscillator 3, which is the sub. You've got the choice of the shape itself, sine wave, same pitch, minus 1, minus 2. Triangular, same pitch, minus 1, minus 2. The color, so you can change a little bit of its shape. And another octave down, an octave higher. So you can go really like, tune it to minus 3 octave. And if you want to hear just that, it, I, I, I don't hear it. <laughs> it's very, I just feel it in the headphone. Like The next phase is actually if we go and we take, let's say, Sawtooth on both places, I'll set it one and two. I'm just changing the pitch of the two and they combine in different ways. So what can, what can I do now? I can actually do cross modulation between these two or sync or ring. Now in cross modulation, I'm gonna bring it up. Let's try triangular wave, which is the easiest way to hear. Now let's bring down oscillator two. So cross modulation is having oscillator two uh, modulating oscillator one. So that's why if I bring it up, I hear it from oscillator one here. So the only thing I don't like here, I would love to have this being modulated by the LFO or the pitch or the pitch envelope, for example. And then, and unless I, I haven't figured out how to, um, I'm going to have to record in the step sequencer that movement to get that, you know, evolution if I want to, because I like that. Like, I like that sound, but there's enough of the color to do you know, without, but this could have been a cool thing to have. If I bring that one down and two up, now I'm going to hear the second one. Now I'm going to take ring. So ring, the second one is being modulated by the first one. If I change the pitch, here I'm changing the pitch of the first one. We're not listening to the first one because the first one is this. I can change the pitch. I can change the pitch like this. Okay. But if I send it to the 
uh, bring it down. I don't want to hear the first one. I hear the second, the one, the second one that is ringed from the first one. Change the pitch. So what I hear is the ringing of the first one on the second one. So now something becomes interesting when I bring this down. Because ringing is fun when it's out of tune. That's where you get that. That ringing, that... So what you can do is you can actually send the LFO to pitch. And it's not changing the pitch on this one. Change the pitch on this one. It's doing this. Same thing with this. I could actually again use the pitch envelope or not. Let's say, let's use, let's get rid of this thing and assign the pitch envelope. So normally, if I don't have the ring, I'm going to hear this. I'm changing the pitch of the two of them. Actually, this one, because this is oscillator two. I'm not e listening to anything else. Oscillator two. If I put the ring on, it's not affecting this one anymore. It's affecting the first one. It's only affecting the second one, sorry. Only affecting this one. If I take it off, it affects one and two and the sub. If I take this ring on, now the pitch control only affects the second one and the LFO also. So it's something that Roland does for us in the case of System 8 is that if you turn this ring on, the pitch control from the pitch and the LFO is assigned to modulating this one, guess, because that's where it's fun to do it. Take it off, everything is affected. Put the sync on, same logic. It's happening this way. So you want to do sync sound. You need to put the, the first one lower. Then you hear that. Very nice. And you can do it with everything. Sawtooth. Square. Triangular. Super saw. And all of them. I mean, it's just like really cool. That's the end of the first part, the part about the oscillators. Next video, part two, it's basically LFO and filters.